Hey everybody, it's RJ, your host, and welcome to Hash It Out. Michigan has quickly risen to be among the largest cannabis markets in the U.S. Amid that has been growing conflict between cannabis corporations and caregivers in the state who have been instrumental in establishing the foundation of the industry. In this episode, I'll be speaking with Fabian Monaco of Gage about the growth of the cannabis industry in Michigan. We'll also discuss the rumored proposal to impose plant restrictions on medical cannabis caregivers, the future of cannabis in the Mitten State and in neighboring regions, and more. Without further ado, let's hash it out. My guest today is the CEO and co-founder of the cannabis company Gage. Welcome to the show, Fabian Monaco. Hello, sir. How are you today? How you doing? Thanks a lot for having me on. Oh, I'm stoked to have you on. Uh, first and foremost, let's just get this out of the way. Gage is a, a Michigan-based company headquartered in Detroit, and I myself am a born and raised Michigander uh, coming from just uh, in about an hour north of Detroit. I came with a prop, my hat. It says, <laughs> right on. Detroit, what up, doe? So I'm stoked to have you on, man, and ask you about uh, all that's going on in the Michigan market and what you've got going on um, internationally even. So thank you so much for sure. coming on and offering your perspective today. Yeah, no, I appreciate you having me on. Looking yeah, forward no to it. Cool. So yeah, so let's just dive right into it. There's a lot uh, happening, uh, particularly in the Michigan cannabis market. Um, Gage, like I said, is uh, a Michigan-based company. Uh, you have locations in uh, Ferndale, Adrian, Detroit, Lansing, Traverse City, Battle Creek, Grand Rapids, and Kalamazoo, where I went to school for a little bit over at WMU. Uh, you've got locations nice. coming soon to Centerline, Saginaw, and New Haven. I love New Haven. Um, and the Michigan market has been making waves lately. Uh, latest statistics show that one out of every nine people in the state reported using cannabis and sales reached 985 million in 2020. So last year, that's a staggering 250% uh, increase from 2019. Uh, so far, just this year, cannabis sales reached $149 million in just June of 2021, uh, which is about $1.8 billion when annualized. Uh, the, the Michigan market is the, the third largest market in the U.S. now, just behind Colorado and California. Um, and so, uh, first and foremost, I just want to ask, uh, how you doing? How, how are you living over there with the, with the market? And, uh, what are your predictions and forecasts for the future of the market? And, uh, what has Gage going, uh, what does Gage have going on, uh, over in Michigan? Yeah, no, you hit, you hit a lot of my key points already. You know, you kind of stole, uh, stole stole a lot of the words out of my mouth. But you know, <laughs> a, as you mentioned, third largest market already, going to probably be double what we saw in 2020 at the very least in terms of sales for the year. Uh, it's been pretty explosive, right? You have this great, great medical patient base in Michigan for so, so many years, and they're just a phenomenal consumer. They consume some of the highest amounts on a per capita basis in all the country, not just, you know, obviously in Michigan or the Midwest. And so we've been blessed with phenomenal, you know, customers, medical patients in Michigan. And as you mentioned, really, really strong growth. Uh, Michigan outside of the top 10 in terms of legal sales in 2019 and jumping to number six and then now jumping to number three in such a short period of time, like hands down the fastest growing market out there. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And uh, I, I might be a little out of date with this, but still the, the only state in the Midwest to have uh, both medical and recreational cannabis legalization. Um, we got a book now too. Yeah, we're going to Illinois. Oh, Illinois. That's Illinois. right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Illinois. I oh, can't forget about Illinois yeah. and Chicago. Chicago. That's a huge market over in Chicago. Um, I, I yeah. also understand that that Gage has uh, some international uh, projects in the works with bringing the cookies brand over into Canada. So can you tell me a little more about that and our, our neighbors to the north? Yeah, so big, big announcement we had yesterday. Um, you know, we're really, really excited to bring the Cookies brand to, to Canada. Uh, we have the exclusive rights to Cookies retail. So we will be opening up a bunch of retail locations in Canada uh, that are obviously Cookies branded. And we'll have the first one in Toronto, and we'll have that open by the end of the year. Uh, partnered with, uh, with a Canadian licensed producer in Canada, you got to remember you can only either do retail 
or cultivation. You kind of can't do both. The government doesn't allow you to be a cultivator and own the retail directly. So a little mm -hmm. bit of a difference, you know, than what we're used to in Michigan. Uh, so with that being said, though, uh, we partnered with a Canadian licensed producer that already grows, you know, gauge branded products for us in Canada. We collect a small royalty off them. So if you came to Canada, you'd actually see you know, the gauge brand is actually alive and well in, in Canada as well, on a smaller scale than obviously in Michigan. Uh, we're going to do the exact same with cookies. Uh, even the gauge brand, we're going to be ex expanding pretty substantially um, over the next little while in conjunction with the new introduction of the cookies brand to Canada. And we're really excited. The feedback's been phenomenal. Uh, cookies, you know, as I always say to people on on these types of shows, it's the Nike of the space. It's the Red Bull of the space, right? So you're, you're dealing with the best. And the fact that we have that partnership with them and we continue to further strengthen that partnership now, not only in Michigan, but now moving to Canada is um, it's just a phenomenal learning experience from us because we get to learn from the best and more importantly, continue to solidify that relationship for the long term. Totally. And I'm curious to know uh, just how um, how has the pandemic sort of affected your ability to to get into that Canadian market? Had there uh, undoubtedly, I can imagine you've been experiencing unique hurdles uh, and possibly any setbacks regarding that. So how have the coronavirus and pandemic health restrictions, lockdowns, travel restrictions, how has that affected operations at all? Yeah, no, I mean, not really. You know what I mean? It hasn't really affected us at all, uh, mainly because in Canada, you know, we're just focusing obviously on the retail side of things to start for Gage. Uh, the Canadian licensed producer, again, already very, very dialed in in terms of uh, in terms of a cultivator, top, top notch cultivator, one of the best in the country. Uh, so we're not too concerned about, you know, anything along those lines and, and ensuring that we have, you know, top notch quality product for our grand opening at, at Cookies coming in Toronto this fall. So all in all, um, hasn't really affected us, to be honest with you. And because we're just starting uh, on that end, and now we're luckily, you know, in an environment where things are a little bit more loose and you have that capability of traveling back and forth now quite easily, um, especially starting in this month of August, where now Americans can come come to Canada uh, if they're double vaccinated. It's, it's really going to hopefully be a, a, a seamless process for us to have that store open in the next uh, 60 to 90 days. Totally. And you mentioned that was in uh, Toronto that's opening pretty soon? Yeah, Toronto is going to be the, the, the first store, the flagship store uh, mm -hmm. for the brand. Obviously, we'll expand to, uh, to other markets, but uh, Ontario, Toronto to start. Yeah. Love it. Love it. I got I got a family up in TDOT, so I'm going to have to refer them over to that uh, to that spot once it opens up. No doubt. 100%. Hope um, you do. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, cool. I'll let you know. I'll let you know if you want to, you know, <laughs> uh, <left>. yeah, <laughs> hook them up or something like that. But um, I want to jump back to uh, to Michigan again, uh, because, uh, you know, the the news has certainly been that the Michigan market is thriving, again, third largest market in the U.S. right now, which is great news. Uh, and you mentioned a little earlier in our conversation just now that Michigan has had, uh, you know, ever since its uh, uh, legalization of medical cannabis in, I think it was tw uh, 2008, um, there has always been a really strong uh, caregiver network. And even before medical legalization was actually mm -hmm. implemented. Um, yeah. And now there seems to be a point of contention between um, uh, medical cannabis caregivers and the cannabis corporations in the state. Um, just a little background for those who may not be familiar with the situation out there. Um, there was a, a form that, was sort of, that has sort of been circulated it's not an official proposal or, or a bill or anything like that, um, but it comes from, so, uh, suspectedly, uh, this, this person has not confirmed whether or not it has come from them, but there is a longtime Republican lobbyist named Steve Linder, who is the director of the Michigan Cannabis Manufacturers Association, uh, and a form has been circulated to lawmakers uh, and representatives um, uh, entitled uh, Addressing Public Health Concerns and the Black Market. Now, the, the document includes proposals to impose stricter limits on, caregiver, uh, on caregivers um, and the, the competition of micro-businesses, which, again, for those who may not know, are, are self-contained recreational license holders who are able to grow, uh, process, mm -hmm. and sell products derived from up to 100 cannabis plants. Um, if, if enacted, and again, it's not a, an official proposal, but if this does hypothetically become a, a law, it would 
limit caregivers to three plants per patient and 12 plants total. Under the current law, mm -hmm. caregivers can have 12 plants per patient and up to 72 plants total. Uh, if enacted, it would also require caregivers to enter their harvests and plants into a state-monitored tracking system, undergo inspections, and, and notify the state government and local municipalities where the caregiver grows um, exist. Now, the Michigan Cannabis Manufacturers Association, you know, to sort of illustrate the size of the illicit market and caregiver mm -hmm. sales in the state, um, uh, paid for uh, like an analysis of the market and found that nearly 70% of all cannabis sales in 2020 in Michigan, or more than $2 billion worth, weren't through licensed businesses. So they were either through caregivers or through that illicit black market. Uh, so first, I just want to know what your thoughts are on that and, and the, the presence of, of caregivers and the illicit market in Michigan um, and what your thoughts are on this this document uh, that is sort of being uh, uh, spread around to uh, get the word out on uh, the, the, the need or the, the want for some people to impose these stricter limits on caregivers. Yeah, no, I mean, you've given me a, a lot to digest there, so I'll try to try to break sure. it down as best as I can. So, you know, for, no for no us doubt. generally, um, you know, we've been big supporters of, of, of caregivers. Uh, we've employed a lot of former caregivers. A lot of our cultivation partners are also former caregivers that have gone to the new system. And so we've always been supported. And at the end of the day, no matter how you, you shape it up, the caregivers are the individuals that built this industry in Michigan. So without a doubt, you know, they've been in place since 2008. They have consistently built this industry for now over a decade. So a lot of credit needs to go to them. And, and, and most definitely, we try to be supportive as, as much as we can to that group. Uh, we haven't really been involved in that political process whatsoever. Um, frankly, we've kind of stayed away from it and, and feel that, you know, the right decision makers will make the proper assessment as to, you know, what should you know, go on in the future uh, in terms of how the sure. caregivers relate to the, to the market as a whole. Um, but again, uh, some of the best cultivators in the country are, are, are caregivers. Um, they've, again, had that experience for now over a decade. We welcome, you know, working with them or partnering with them, especially if, you know, some of them want to come to the, uh, um, you know, the new, let's call it, regime that the state has imposed. So at the end of the day, most definitely feel safety, health is, is, is a primary concern for, for everyone. We want to ensure that the product that people are consuming in Michigan is is not only top-notch quality, but also proper product that's been tested and you know is appropriate to consume. So at the end of the day, I think everyone's all for that, including the caregivers. Um, I'm just uh, again, we've generally stayed away from that 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 process and that and that movement generally because, again, we're we're, we're decently supportive of the caregivers in the sense that. We, we want the best for the industry. You know, we, we support, you know, the Right to Grow initiative as well. Um, if there's individuals out there that want to grow their own product and consume their own product for medicinal purposes or for their own purposes, frankly, for their own well-being, you know, we support that as well. Um, you know, we don't, uh, I don't want to say, you know, we're, we're an overly confident brand, but, you know, we, we, we put a lot into our product. We put a lot of time, effort, uh, try to come up with new varieties, really go through painstaking, uh, post-production processes as well to ensure that we're bringing pretty much the best product that we could possibly bring to the market. And so with that, we you know we have confidence that our product sells and sells well in the current environment and, you know, are, again, are supported of those individuals, those entities um, that really created this nearly, you know, $2 billion market. Um, yeah. You said it right off, you know, the bat there, over 70% of, uh, of the sales, um, over $2 billion, are coming from you know caregivers or let's call it the illicit market would love obviously to to bring as much of those uh, you know two billion dollars to uh, to gauge in terms of sales, but again uh, want to be highly supportive of those that have again you know, really brought this industry to where it is today in Michigan. You know, we didn't become the the second largest medical cardholder system up until probably 2020. You know, um, by chance, it was these caregivers that drove that process. Uh, it was these caregivers that, you know, brought forth the benefits of the plant to the people in Michigan. And, um, you know, they deserve credit for that. And, you know, I'll keep my uh, I'll keep my fingers crossed that an appropriate decision is made that, you know, it's kind of beneficial to everybody involved. Because at the end of the day, 
we want this, you know, industry in Michigan to be a five, six, seven billion dollar market. Never mind a, mm. you know, a three billion dollar market that Michigan State has pegged it at. Um, mm. You know, we want we want this thing to get as big as possible, and however that can be, um, you know, we're fully supportive of that. No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I, um, you know, I certainly relied on caregivers when I lived in Michigan uh, for medical cannabis, um, and I certainly see you know, the, the importance of, of testing, because you always want to know what's in what you're putting in your body. Like, that's a pretty, totally. that's, yeah. that's a pretty, you know, that, that makes sense, right? You definitely or, don't want to, you definitely want to know small, what you're putting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, 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 that. yeah. <laughs> certainly. Yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense that people would want to know what they're putting in their body. Totally. Um, but I guess my biggest concern, uh, with that, that, uh, that memo that's being circulated is like the plant restriction. I, I, I certainly understand the idea of like wanting to bring them into uh, the, the regulatory testing system and, and inspections and knowing where the caregiver grows are like, sure, that, that all makes perfect sense. But um, I, I, I'm not sure how uh, restricting the number of plants that they can grow helps though. Um, and I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the, the main driving force is of that particular um, request. Again, we, we haven't been too involved in that process at all. Uh, sure. it, frankly, not too involved. We haven't been involved at all. So um, I'm not sure what their, what their desires are in trying to impose a, a plant restriction on, on those caregivers. Uh, so it's really tough for me to, to tell. Um, the only thing, again, I could say, you know, pretty, pretty forcefully is that, you know, when it comes to testing and safe quality product uh, and ensuring that everyone is getting proper, properly tested product and safe, safe product to consume, I think that benefits everybody, including the caregivers, because it just at least it creates a regime that just people are extremely, extremely confident to going to, um, you know, a caregiver, a licensed producer uh, versus the illicit market to purchase their product because they have that confidence in the safety of the product. We all want that. And I think that will also start to drive and pull a lot of people out of the illicit market into you know, uh, the legal market when you can start continually producing high quality product that is tested, that is safe to consume. Because I think at the end of the day, like we talked about just you know, a few minutes ago, if you're confident in what you're putting in your body, you're more likely to probably go purchase that product versus something that you really don't know how it was, you know, produced and, and how it was, uh, how it gotten to, uh, into your joint. <laughs> Certainly. Yeah, definitely. And I want, I also am just curious, um, you know, as I mentioned at, at the top of the show here, uh, I'm a born and raised Michigander. Uh, I'll, I'll show everyone for everyone who understands what this means. I'm from right here. The, the Michiganders out there will know what I'm what I'm talking about. Um, and so I'm just curious, like, what are your uh, observations for um, the, the Michigan market? What are specifically what are the, the strains that you see are the most common out there in the Michigan community? Yeah, to be honest with you, the you know, gelatos are doing really, really well. So we have a, a whole whole slew of you know gelato strains out there uh, that are performing exceptionally well these days. Um, you know, for us too, it's just about also crossing some of the more popular strains that we have just generally and trying to come up with some new varieties. You know, for the consumer to have. Um, sure. But most definitely, more recently, uh, we introduced, I'd say, a good solid five or six gelato type strains and they've been selling really really well very 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 good uh very very good product to start off and then and then most definitely there seems to be a lot of popular popularity sorry surrounding those those types of strains okay right on right on i uh, fingers crossed as long as uh you know travel remains the same in terms of accessibility i'm visiting back home uh in in august next month so um i'll definitely have to look that up i'll definitely have to look up the gelato vibe you gotta there. come by yeah you gotta come by yeah one of no doubt spots. oh for sure oh for sure you'll definitely be hearing from me next month <laughs> when i'm in the area no doubt um my, my last question for you before i let you go here and thank you so much for your time is just what else have you got looking uh looking forward uh for the rest of the year over at gauge uh, other than of course the the venture into uh the canadian market 
Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll want to expand pretty aggressively in Michigan. You know, we've, we've done a lot so far. We want to probably essentially double our retail footprint in terms of operational retail footprint. We'll have our 10th location open up pretty soon. Really trying to push to have 20 open by the end of the year. I think when we get to 2022, um, really trying to push that maybe closer to 30. We think the sweet spot for Michigan, too, is about 25 to 35 locations across the state. Um, okay. We think we can get uh, to that level and you know, probably reach 90 to 95 percent of the consumers within a 20, 25 minute drive. And you got dynamic delivery in Michigan as well, which is great. So it really allows you to create a just a phenomenal network of you know, locations and also a delivery network to really reach the majority of uh, the people in Michigan. Um, and then I'd say probably out-of-state options are, are, are starting to heat up for us. So um, we talked about Illinois. There are other phenomenal markets out there, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey, uh, Pennsylvania. Just a lot, a lot of opportunity in cannabis right now these days. I'd say every state you know, seems to be pretty attractive in terms, of, um, in terms of the opportunity to potentially enter into those states. So I think you'll see something from Gage in some shape or form or another um, of our entry into another state. Uh, potentially by the end of this year, either, you know, an announced deal or hopefully a closed deal. But, um, you know, we are confident with where we're going in Michigan. We're happy with where we're going in Michigan. We should be, you know, the number one cultivator of flower by the end of this year. Um, we'll be one of the top retailers as well. So we're well on our way to being, you know, major, major, if not the best and major player in Michigan today. Um, and then, you know, once we have our sites and are comfortable with where we're at there, again, you'll see us probably enter into another state. Yeah, yeah, I was stoked yeah, on that. So that, that should, I think they're going to come out with their process soon, their application process within the next, next little while. Or maybe they already did, to be honest with you. I can't recall. Um, sometimes yeah. I get confused with all the cities that we're, we're trying to track here. But yeah, but when, the, when you come, for sure, like, you know, going to the, the we have a cookies location in Detroit. Um, Ferndale is not too far, obviously, from, from Detroit. Um, so either one of those, I think you'd love. Or if you go in the West End, too, go to Grand Rapids or KZU. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Solid location. So let me know. Yeah. We'll do. We'll do. Yeah, we'll be in touch. We'll be in touch for sure, man. Um, well, thank you so much uh, for your perspective and offering all uh, of the insight uh, into what's happening over at Gage and over in the, the Michigan cannabis market and internationally into Canada. I really appreciate the time, man. Please continue to be well and stay safe out there in the Mitten State. And again, we'll certainly be in touch when I come to visit. Yeah, no, again, appreciate you having me on. Would love to be on in the future. And uh, obviously, when you come to Michigan, let me know. Got it. Will do, man. I appreciate you. Fabian Monaco, everybody. That is it for Hash It Out. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. I am your host, RJ Balde, as always, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out our channel. Click here to watch another episode of Hash It Out. To find more cannabis industry reporting, insider stories, and to stay up to date on the latest trends, make sure to subscribe and keep up with our Tricombs community app. Download it now for free and we'll see you there.